so awesome. We'll take a moment just right now to look out at your family and your friends here. They love you, they're so excited for you. And their love here today is embodied by the fact that they've shown up to, to support you guys. This is so great. Well, God is here too. He senses his presence. He delights in marriage. He invented marriage. And he's very, very excited and happy about today. So let's take a moment to thank God for, for being here with us. Lord God, thank you so much for, for bringing Andrea and Matt together. Um, what a joy it is, God, to see their marriage um, that takes place today, to see their relationship grow and blossom. And Lord, uh, we're just so grateful for the many blessings that you give us, including relationships with one another. And we ask God that you be glorified today and that you uh, just continue to show your presence today in this ceremony. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, I wanted to get you guys uh, to know the couple a little bit more because I know you guys know them in some way, shape, or form. But what I did is I decided to send an email to them with some questions, and they were supposed to answer without comparing notes because that usually is more fun that way, right? And so anyways, here's a couple questions that I asked them. First off is if you went to Coffee with God, what would you say to him about your fiancé? Mm -hmm. And Matt said, quote, good job. <laughs> she is perfect in every way and I wouldn't change anything about her Andrea said thank you for bringing him into my life you knew what you were doing we are a balanced match and I know you take delight in our relationship thank you for making Matt the way he is and choosing me to be with him I'm so excited to be marrying my best friend I also asked them because I'm assuming you guys would want to know this too. Uh, describe your first kiss. Right? Uh, Matt said, she just got back from her peace trip to Ukraine. It was our six month anniversary. It was short but sweet. Andrea had a little bit more to say. <laughs> she said, our first kiss was after we were dating six months. I got back from my two week mission trip to Ukraine. Everyone came to pick me up and Matt had a bouquet of pink roses and a photo album of our first six months together. When we got back home, Matt followed me into the kitchen, and I went to get a drink of water, and he kissed me in front of the sink. Firework, fireworks, LOL. And <laughs> Love that. Uh, lastly, um, I asked, how does he or she compliment you and make you a better person? Andrea said, God has a funny way of putting opposites together. Where I lack, Matt makes up for it, and vice versa. We make a great team and an even match. Proverbs 27, 17 says, As iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. And that's us. Matt says, She has faith when I don't. She worship, worships God when I worry um, about the future. She reminds me constantly that God is in control. <clears throat> Matt and Andrew, thank you for giving us a glimpse into your relationship and answering those questions. And it's very evident that God brought you guys together. Um, he made that very clear from the, the beginning. And it's just so great to see you guys uh, follow in obedience to that and are here today. <clears throat> well, um, Matt, as an expression of your desire to live out your commitment, your unconditional commitment and love to Andrea um, in marriage, please respond by saying, I do. Do you, Matt, take Andrea as your wife to love her and to cherish her for the rest of your life? Do you promise to love her, comfort her, and honor and respect her in sickness and in health, forsaking all others to give yourself fully to Andrea. Andrea is an expression of your desire to live out an unconditional commitment of love to Matt in marriage. Please respond by saying, I do. Do you, Andrea, take Matt as your husband to love and to cherish for the rest of your life? Do you promise to love him and to comfort him, to honor and respect him in sickness and in health, forsaking all others to give yourself fully to Matt? Well, Matt and Andrea, your ability um, to have a healthy marriage and a vibrant marriage is strongly related to uh, your understanding of God's grace and his love and his grace for Jesus. And if you want to have a healthy marriage, I encourage you to look to Christ. That is why I love the verse that you guys asked me to share today with the audience here. And that is uh, 1 John 4.12. It says, No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. This passage is right, and no one has ever really seen God in his spiritual form, but God decided to send his son, uh, the representation of himself, the fullness of himself, to earth so that we could see what God looks like. Colossians 2.9 says, For in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. 
and John 10 says that Jesus himself has said that I and the Father are one. So Jesus came to earth to do what we could not do for ourselves. It was he who forgave us of our past through his death and his resurrection from the cross. It was he who gave us a purpose for living. And you taught us that the greatest commandments were to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, and mind, to love our neighbors as ourselves. And it's also he who gave us a home in heaven. For we know that God loved us so much that he sent his only begotten son, that whoever should believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. All those things and more God has done for you and I. And God loves us. But what does it mean for us to say today that God loves us? Because I can say that I love my wife, I love football, and I love tacos. What does that mean? There, the English language doesn't really capture the true meaning of love. But God tells us in his word that love is patience, love is kind, it is not envious, and it does not boast. It's humble, it's considerate, it's selfish and slow to get angry. Love keeps no records of wrong. It does not delight in evil, it rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. First John 3.16 said, This is how we know what love is, that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. So we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. That's what love is. But the world teaches us a conditional kind of love, a love that's just solely based on feelings. Feelings are not wrong by any sense, but it's not the best place to build a foundation for marriage. And Hollywood uh, often communicates that love is based off of our feelings, and that's really in what its sum it is. But if that were truly the case, then we look at these Hollywood marriages and see long-lasting relationships, right? But we don't. Um, but what we see is that God came to earth to give us that love, that selfless love, and he wants us to embody that as well. And there will be a temptation in your marriage um, to do marriage under conditional slash feelings-based approach. And it looks like this. If Andrew does the dishes, then I will mow the lawn. Or if Matt fixes the sink, then maybe I'll give him a back massage. <laughs> but Jesus calls you to something greater than that. Jesus' love for us is unconditional. Uh, for if our acceptance into God's family